I believe children should learn to cook. Um, they should be able to, when they leave school, cook for themselves, to feed their families and themselves, cheaply but well. The farm is central to the school, it's not just an add-on. It's been here for almost 70 years, so it has grown with the school and become an important part of the curriculum. The community, um, well, everybody knows O'Torford School Farm. Who's picking up my piglet? I think we've got to remember there's a culture there of supermarkets, isn't it? And things are there readily labelled and packaged in any form from any month of the year from all over the world. And what I'm trying to bring back is that direct link between growing something and then cooking it and eating it. Right, over here as quickly as you can. This morning first lesson was year seven. They have nine weeks practical cookery with me. In that nine weeks, I do a healthy packed lunch with them and we do a lot of different skills because I like them to use lots of different foods. Today's lesson was about bread making. We're going to be adding some different ingredients. We've got cheese and herbs, garlic, poppy seeds and so on and they might change it in some way. It's up to you now. You need to take your flour shaker, your flour and go and get straight on. If you need a sheet, here's your worksheet. Okay and off you go. Well, we're making bread today, and um, we're using um, um, flour, blend yeast, margarine, water, and a pinch of salt. And we can add either garlic, cheese, or I think it's herbs to add in. And I've chosen cheese to add in with mine. So there's two different flour makers in East Sussex, and there's Jill Mill and Jack Mill, and they make the flour specially then. You can see it being made, and you can buy flour fresh from them. Right, you should be gathering your dough together now, ready to put on the table to knead. Remember, it's ten minutes kneading. I'm sticking all the dough together so I can knead it. You have to leave it to rise for ten minutes before you put it in the oven. I think everyone's dough now is ready to shape. You've done a very good job with your kneading. We can do any shape we like, as long as they're all the same size. Then we put them in the oven and then they, they rise because of the yeast. How are you going to plait it? Which is going over which first? This one? Make it nice and tight. And you have to plait them over like you do in hair. And then this is just a normal roll and this is a sort of baguette shape. And you can also make a bagel shape or something, but it has to be able to rise quickly. We're trying to like make people see that it's, um, you can have nice things, if, even if you're healthy. Poppy seeds and herbs are on the top there. The egg wash and brushes are there. My mother was a passionate cook. My grandmother was a passionate cook. And I can remember at the age of nine, I made my mother a birthday cake and I iced it and piped her name and everything on it as well. And that was at age of nine years old. Ready to go in there, good. Remember the tray goes sideways on. Now the problem with bread making, of course, is the proving. Generally speaking, they do just about manage it. One advantage is, of course, at the end, if the bread is only part-baked, it can come out of the oven because you can buy part-baked bread in the supermarket. They take it home and just finish it off in the oven and eat it warm. No, you see, it's still squidgy, so it's not done. There you go. Now, this one's a little bit more golden because she put cheese on the top as well. The second lesson today was um, year nine, and we were looking at soup making. Chopping boards are there. Remember, your sharp knives are over here. Herbs are there if you want to use them. The Salt soups were traditional British soups. The leek and potato is Welsh, and it uses seasonal vegetables. The mushroom was a cream of mushroom soup. And the last one was tomato, and they could put basil or orange or peppers yeah. in with it as well to make it slightly different. Can you smell the basil? Yeah. If you tear it, if you tear the leaf, smell better. It's used a lot in Italian cookery. I chose the leek one because my mum and my dad liked it and we make it a lot. My mum's never taught me to make it, so I thought if I try it in this lesson, then I'll probably make it at home. We'll take it home and then we'll give it to our mums and our dads and we'll see what they think about it. And then we'll write an evaluation 
on um, what they thought of it, how it tasted and if it could have been better. I did the tomato because all my family loved tomato and I love tomato as well. My sister did cooking for uh, GCSE and she got an A star with Miss Cooper as well. So um, I, might, I think I'll take it for GCSE because I do really enjoy it. And um, it's a handy thing to have really, isn't it? Put it all in, don't waste it. I put it all in the saucepan and it's starting to really sizzle now. The cream will take two minutes and the chives not that long at all. Chop chives up into little pieces. I've practically finished. I've just taken it off the heat and I've got to liquidise it for thickness because it's gone a bit watery. But um, after I've done that, it should thicken up and then we'll have a soup. <laughs> nice. Oh. Yeah, they pushed down. It's because I'm allergic to dairy, like lactose intolerant. So um, I, mum gets this special vegetable soup thing. Yeah, it's quite nice, yeah. And um, um, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I'll be allowed to try it. So I'm quite good at cooking. I want to be a chef when I'm older. I just like the creativity, what you get to make and stuff. I want to open up a special shop called Dairy Free Daniel. Right, soup's here with your clean saucepans, please. I think my mum will really like that because um, I've done it a bit differently because she only uses the potatoes and the leeks. But I've used chives, cream, nutmeg, and um, I think my dad will like it as well. Look at the lovely colours. Right, well done. What's impressing you about this then, the, apart from the colours? The decoration. Excellent, the decoration. You've all made a really good effort today. It's lovely basil and parsley decoration. Tomato mm. and orange. Tomato and orange in this one. Lovely, look, chives, chopped chives on top with the cream swirls. Very nice eating potato. Uh, I've developed it into what I like to call the outdoor classroom. Uh, and we've turned the farm here and gardens into a, a whole school resource. So it's, it's really impacting on every subject in the curriculum. I've bought three British cheeses this time. We've started a project where they're going to design and make a new savoury flan suitable for teenagers. So today we were looking at other ingredients they could possibly use in their flans for themselves. No, you like that one um, it's quite, I think it almost tastes like rice pudding. Well, we're looking at dairy products such as cheese, yoghurt, milk and like the different types of products, how they taste, what's the texture, just everything different about them seeing what we want to include in our flan. Quite an odd taste, so it's quite sort of tastes like you're eating a bean or something. I would pick the mature cheddar because I think it would go better. I think it would taste better as like on the top of the flan. That's disgusting. That tastes like. A cross between off cream and normal milk. We followed the lesson with a visit to our farm. The farm is situated at the other end of the school, where we saw a cow milked. And Howard Wood, our head of the farm unit, was very capable in telling them and explaining to them about the milking of the cow safely and hygienically. Well, this is the perfect way to learn where milk comes from. And we're going to show you really the routine that we go through in milking her. And it's really about how we keep that milk as clean as possible because all around us in this atmosphere are bacteria or you may have heard them called microbes in science. Um, why is it so important to get, stop the microbes getting up the teeth? Right, if they get up into the udder itself they can start to attack what we call alveoli which actually produce the milk. The irony is for us it takes about four minutes to milk the cow and about 24 minutes to clean the machine afterwards. I thought it was quite interesting because I didn't realise how many times um, they were milked during the day and I didn't realise and, like, how the, the whole process of how you actually did it, I thought you just uh, did it by hand. 
the greatest strength, I think, is, is developing people's confidence and, and self-esteem. And it's this vocational learning, working as a team, being aware of safety, being able to communicate with people around you. I think that's the important things for people in their future lives. We try and produce, we produce a lot of meat, a lot of vegetables, and wherever possible that goes into the school. Stir fries and stroganoff today, yes? Yep, yep. I know it's the first time you've made it, and it's something new and interesting, different for you to do. Multicultural work, remember, using our homegrown farm food. Here we've got the pork, it's all measured out for you. It was actually pork fillet, which is a better cut than you had in the pork tenderloin on your recipe. And that's because it was a similar price and a better quality meat for you to use. Uh, well, I'm making a stir-fried pork with baby corn. It's the first time we've, we've used meat. I do a little bit of cooking at home. I'm starting to help around the house uh, with the cooking. And um, because I'm learning here, it's, sometimes I can like, make a meal for my family at home. Um, I have garlic and I've got ginger, if anyone would like to use any. The farm provided the meat for us this time, whereas normally students all bring in their own ingredients. I've got spicy tomato stir fry sauce and I've got some soy sauce as well to give it a bit of flavouring. Sauce making, I always use the all-in-one method. The classicists would say it's not as good, but it serves the purpose in the time we have available. Me and my family usually eat it and then they give me some, like they say if they like it or if they don't like it and what I can improve on. We'll put the pork in first, so because the vegetables will go, will cook quicker and until this goes like a nice goldy brown, then we add with the vegetables. It's got to boil. All right. Lessons at Oak Tool are based on a one hour timetable. It's very, very tight timing to get the children to come in, to prepare something, cook it, get it cooked and get them out on time for the next lesson. So if you've got more than one skill in a dish, it's very difficult to do it in a single lesson. It's going from um, a sort of pinky colour to a white and then it, in the end it's going to go to a well brown. I've just put some of the sauces in and now I'm mixing the vegetables and the pork together and it should look really nice at the end. Right, how are we doing? Washing up? We haven't finished. Right, stir fries in the middle please. You've done very well. You've learnt a new method, you have been better organised, there are a lot more new processes that you haven't done before today. So well done, I hope you enjoy them. And then off you go. Yeah, it's really good. I would hope that every school will be able to teach cooking. It's healthy, it's enjoyable, it's essential to their knowledge of um, how to eat well, how to eat healthily, about budgeting, um, about managing things, and it's a very, very good teaching tool for organisation and for planning. If we aim to have students who leave the school who are equipped for life and for being members of the community, then they need to be able to cook. These are the cross um, saddleback with the large white. It tastes so much better if you've grown it and then you've cooked it. I think it's fantastic. <laughs>